Good morning guys, it is about 25 past 4 and I'm about to head down to West Lakes to do a 10k paddle training for the Victor Harbour tuna season out in the kayak. Um, normally I leave about an hour earlier than this but <laughs> I was having a pretty good dream last night. I was dreaming about tuna, yes, I was dreaming about catching tuna. And I thought, this is too good, so... But, we're just going to head down to Dotra Park, with a reserve down by West Lakes. they got a good launching facility, and, um, yeah, we'll see you when we get there. <laughs> She's uh, looking pretty flat out there at the moment, so it should be a fairly easy morning. And this is my stealth setup, or as the Kiwis would say, my stealth setup. <laughs> it's just a 495 uh, Evo, uh, obviously 4.95 metres long, fiberglass, full hatch down the centre, and a screw lid hatch, which. Uh, it's currently got tape over it because I lost the hatch in West Lakes. <laughs> but I'm waiting for another hatch to come in the post, so hopefully that should be here this week and I'll do a video on how to install a new hatch. And uh, yeah, I'll just carry it on a pair of Glide soft racks and uh, it does the job really nice. So it saves you having to spend four or five, even six hundred dollars on a set of roof racks, so and they don't leave any dents in the roof, which is pretty good. They're pretty sturdy, and when you don't want to use them, you take them off. So... Not a single other person on the water. The last two, two weekends or so, they've been running the uh, SABC uh, comp down here at West Lakes and the Yak Hunters Round 2 brim. So every time I've launched, there's always been people here. And uh, there's always been people when I got back. So it was always good to stop and have a chat, but this morning it's just all me. So, keys away. It's also another handy thing with the stealth is that they give you a, uh, it's a fairly deep, um, tackle tray in there, along with the hatch, so that's pretty handy. Then straps up. I always put my light in there and use it as a headlight, so I'm gonna tilt it up a bit, but it's not too bad as a headlight. I don't know what the footage is going to be like, but I think it'll be alright. Never forget your paddle leash, because uh, you don't want to be monkeying around for your paddle, that sucks. Sander on. I always run out of split frequency, and in a minute, you'll be able to see. See, look at that, just on that drop off, there's almost wall to wall fish arches. See, the sound has just lit up. It's 
fish everywhere. That's what it's like pretty much the whole way through around here when it's uh, just before sun up. And then by about 9 or 10 o'clock, they'll go off the bite. So it's a, a bit weird, but you get that. Temperatures. <laughs> the water is 11 point, 11 point. Oh, fuck. oh, it's slowly climbing as the transducer warms through, <laughs> and it's not going. Oh, cross! It's 11.2 degrees. That's the water temperature. That's probably why no one's out here because it's a bit chilly. <laughs> so, but no, that's all right. It's not too bad, we'll just take it easy this morning and uh, yeah, so normally Matt, my mate Matt comes out with me but um, he's a bit crook at the moment so that's got him grounded unfortunately, but he'll be out here probably next week, so yeah have a look at all those fish, there's just fish archers everywhere on the sand. So. But, we're just paddling today. Check this out. This is most likely a small mulloway or big brim. But there's just fish after fish down there. It's nuts. So, I'm tempted to bring a rod down here and do a bit of trolling for dirt. But, alright, this paddle takes about an hour and a bit and I don't really have the time. The only reason I stop off at Springbank is because it's on the way home. So. Right. See? More fish archers. It's just it's nuts down here in the dark. But you never see anybody in their kayaks down here. So it's always during the day and they've all finished up feeding, so. Absolute shockers. <laughs> Screen's just lit up with fish. So, like, actually chockers. It is water wall down there in the moon. Holy crap. It's an okay fish too, but it looks a bit crap.
doctoral reserve in the lot. It's, um, your boat ramps straight down there, so it's pretty much just a straight drive down, and it's concrete nearly to the water, so you're all right, and yeah. So I've just come down to Springbank Estate on the way home and there's birds everywhere. You got the bin chicken, some seagulls, some wood ducks. But hopefully there should be some carp around. And they get pretty big in here. My biggest one out of here is about four kilos. My biggest one that I actually weighed was about Three, went to 3.1 kilos I reckon and that was taken on fly a couple of weeks ago so they're around but I've heard of people catching bigger five kilos plus so we'll see what happens I can see the tail swirls, but I, don't, I think they must be feeding on the bottom. I've only seen one of them touch one carp come up and touch the bread, but um, yeah, otherwise it's just tail swirls, which usually means they're nose down feeding in the dirt. Unfortunately, I only bought a bread fly, so yeah, a floating bread fly for that, a dry fly. Well, you just got to kind of be lucky, I guess. So, because the water's so stained and it's full of shit at the moment. Um, yeah. Oh, there's all this bloody. There's all these branches and leaves and rubbish and stuff that's flowed down from. There's a. Um, drainage system that comes out just around the bend there and all that flows down in the rain so unfortunately all this stuff comes with it but when it's pretty clean the uh, the fish are pretty well on the bite so yeah, you can see by the bubbles as well that they're feeding them Just lazy right there, just feeding right on the top. Here he is, right there. Yeah. Almost took it. There's another one right there. Ever, ever so lazily feeding on the stuff on the tops. Yep, gotcha! <laughs> we got a fish, guys. Fish on! <laughs> oh, he's running. That's alright. <laughs> and this is what carp on fly looks like. <laughs> yeah, he's running. He's not bad. <laughs> oh wow, he's actually going. He's uh, he's not stopping either. So oh, it feels like a good one. Oh wow, he's running. Yeah, I'm gonna have to bring him back in or go under the bridge. Oh, oh damn! Come on, come back 
this way. Yeah, no, he's... Uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, he's just going for a bit of a run, so unfortunately it's a left-handed reel though, and there's... <laughs> It takes a bit of time to get the line back, so I don't want to give him too much slack. But, yeah, it's a good fish. Yeah, that didn't take too long. Normally it takes about half an hour to get him on the bar, but not this time. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's a nice fish, I reckon. That's good, yeah, they were just lazily feeding on the top and then put it right, just shift it right in front of his face. Ah, good fish, though. Stonker fish. <laughs> God, I hope this is recording. <laughs> That's not I'm gonna be pissed off. Oh, oh well. Yeah, no, that's a really nice fish. Yeah, even with all the, all the garbage and litter in the water, they're still, and the cool temperature too, they're still biting on the surface, so it's good, but, because I've never had any much luck with sinking flies so I always just use uh, dry flies for carp and works every time. Yeah, that's a good fish. That's a real good fish. Come on. Let me actually check. Yeah, it's recording. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is awesome. Uh, just walking back to the bank. Oh, that's a really good fish. Yeah, there's about three or four of them feeding. Yeah, no, that's a nice fish. That's a real nice fish. That'd probably be about four kilos, I reckon. There's always fish in here and they're always feeding, so... I think it's pretty good with the uh, warm autumn weather that we've had, they, um, they've kept on the box, so... But yeah, there's about three of them feeding. Pinned him right on the top of the lip too, so it's a yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, he's not. I don't think he's done yet. I'm gonna really. But yeah, all I'm using is um just eight weight fly line and a twelve pound uh, twelve pound leader, not fluorocarbon or anything, just just mono. So but yeah, yeah, that's a good fish. It's a real good fish. Shit. Yeah, the fly just come out, but we got him. <sighs> Look at that. <laughs> yeah, first one on camera. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a really good one, so. How's yeah, that from Mud Marlin? <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, you can't put them back, so. Here's a, this one will be crab bait for the um, summer season, so. 
for the table fish and then when we get a when we fill the freezer we um go after the tuna so yeah might just chuck this guy on the measure and have a look and then I'll Six, yep, 66. That's pretty good. Probably about four kilos, I reckon. Three and a half, four kilos. So, yeah. Good stuff. <sighs> well. We did it, we got one, and we got it on film, so, yeah, no, that was a really good fight, and that's probably about four kilos worth of fish there, so, it's, um, yeah, it's my biggest, I reckon that's probably my biggest one so far, I think, but I'll weigh it when I get home, and, um, yeah, and, that's it, <laughs> no, it's, um, this is what I do, um, most Sunday mornings I just go out for a paddle and then stop here on the way home but sometimes I run out of time and just don't come here but yeah but I always find in the mornings that the fish are on the bite so if you ever get bored one day you know you can if you and you've got a fly rod just go down and see Steve at spot on fishing tackle and he'll supply the bread flies and you can go try it for yourself anyway that's a wrap Cheers guys, thanks for watching. If you've got uh, any pointers or tips, just leave them in the comments below. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And um, yeah, thanks for watching my first YouTube video. Cheers. Bye.